I guess to start with, I'll bring bring you in, Len. Um, can you just sum up the mood of the group after a loss like that, and how quickly you have to sort of park a performance like Saturday and move on to the next? Yeah, obviously the the boys are pretty disappointed um, with the results last week, but we kind of went through our review of the game and we've kind of moved on and we've trained well this morning and we're just looking forward to to the week ahead. So the boys are just excited to get back out there. Does it help coming to a place like Perth where you've had success with that Optus in the past? You know, you're playing in that 22 game against England, when that sort of that famous comeback win where you sort of sort of got the ball rolling amid a lot of sort of setbacks. Yeah, um, it's always awesome to come over Perth and, and play out of the stadium. Um, but yeah, the boys are just you know, ready to get out there and um, play a good game against the Suffers. As James said, was on yesterday talking about just sort of how the team diverted from the game plan. Was that the sort of similar theme that's come up? It's just sticking, that the importance of sticking to the process this week and sort of taking those opportunities when it presents? Yeah, for sure. I think we missed a lot of opportunities out, um, out there last week. Um, and for us, it's, it's making sure that we take those moments and, and, and um, capture those moments and move forward there. So, yeah. I guess Jeff, one for you. Um, losing guys like Nick Frost and Jeremy Williams almost, almost within sort of like 10, 15 minutes in that last period of the game. How much did that sort of affect the set pace flow and how you look to sort of bridge that gap when you bring guys like Seru and um, Josh Cunham, Sam Carter, these guys who haven't been around the camp for as long as these other guys have? Yeah, I'm always disappointed to lose guys, especially when you lose blokes in the in the same position. We know it can, it can affect you, but we're always, I guess, we're sort of a next man up mentality. Um, the lads that have come in have been excellent, have trained really well, uh, learning really fast. Um, the rest of the group, the players as well, they're um, taking them to the side and, and teaching them. So, mate, so far they've fitted in really well and we've been really pleased with training. Um, hi Jeff, hope you're going well. Um, can you just explain, we haven't had the chance to speak to Joe just yet since uh, Josh Cannon joined the group and Stan Carter. Uh, why, why Josh, what does he bring and is he in the mix this week to, to take the field? Uh, look, I know Josh very well, brings some uh, great intent in what he does, very skillful, um, great engine for a... Uh, for a lock, great engine. Um, in terms of busy in the mix this week, I definitely wouldn't be saying that in here because the team's not been picked yet. Um, we'll review um, review training today and then make a decision on, on on guys. But look, he's a he's a good kid. He's got a bright future. We just want him to keep keep working hard. Um, like I said, I'm a definitely a fan of him and a lot of other locks that we had uh, have. Sorry, um, I just know he's got to keep working at, at his game. So, so Ryan Smith had been in the you know amongst the group a little bit, um, but you've gone with Josh this week. Is that because of a particular characteristic that he has that you guys think might suit the box more than what Ryan had? Uh, another reason is Ryan Smith had a kid, uh, became a father for the first time on Sunday. So um, there's a, a, a big reason there. So he's looking for him, and I think um, fairly early as well. So is that right, Maria? Fairly early, so I think um, it's important for him to be with his wife and baby right now as well. Yeah, that's that's a fair reason. What um, what, what what's what have, what have you made of the Springboks line out and their variations over the last couple of weeks? Um, and, and I know that Joe said that he was expecting a little bit of of what they were doing with the double jumpers, but how do you think the progress is going there with the set piece? It's uh, even the scrum. It's, it's difficult against uh, that box front row. Mate, look, we, we know they're a good team. They're a, um, everyone does. They're a cohesive team, a cohesive forward pack with a high number of caps, played so many games um, together. They always stick in a, a little special, whether it's around a mall or a sneak around around the park. Um, that one was obviously very inventive. And we know we've got some big boys that um, do the basics really well. Like We're fully aware of what the task was last week and we're probably... A, um, Maybe a bit of a, a, a probably a, I'm trying to think of the right word, not a reality check, but a, um, just a bit of grounding for our lads, just to say that this, these are the, the current world champions. And um, as a pack, you know, when you're playing against the current world champions as a backline as well, you know, you've got to be right on your game. And 
like Lenny said earlier, little areas that we were inaccurate at, chances missed. It could have been a different game if we'd played, if we'd done our things better. Um, and the review's been pretty, um, pretty direct with things we could do better, but mainly looking at opportunities as well, opportunities missed. Jeff, talking about that, looking at those little bits of execution, have you looked at the, um, in the review, those kind of moments of discipline early on, um, you know, giving away, I think, four or five penalties in the first little bit there, just giving them access to your line and um, in a way, is that, you know, can there be a positive in, in spotting that and showing that to the team that minus those those errors, you could, like you say, a different game? Of course, mate. And look, discipline comes about when we're inaccurate. So it's basically focusing on can we be, or be more accurate in our game. But just like you said, you do not want to give a team like South Africa um, entry points in your 22. You don't want to give them um, ball. And we're, we're fully aware of that, mate. If you look at the first half, we didn't have much territory at all um, you know so how can we exert our game it's just by being accurate when we when we get a chance to when we um, through set plays through our unstructured attack defence whatever it is but the discipline comes from being inaccurate and unfortunately we were particularly inaccurate in those first probably 10 minutes of that game and is there anything behind that is it, is it over enthusiasm sort uh, of to, to make an impact at a breakdown or something <coughs> sometimes mate sometimes it's a uh, uh, a team that's still getting to know each other. You know, let's be, be real about the, the team. Um, but we, what do you think, mate? We, we've got some great players here. Great players, great lads. We'll keep plugging away in training. Um, you know, like I said, we don't want to give them entry points, but the lads are the lads are fully fully aware of that. So when you have a squad with, I think it's about four or five years difference between the South Africans and Australians in terms of experience, can losses, how do you sort of make sure losses like this turns into real sort of building blocks for the next sort of couple of years coming up when you consider the Lions and World Cups uh, on the horizon when you're going to be playing world-class teams? As long as we learn. So as long as we learn from, from our mistakes, mate. It's, um, you know, that's, that's the first important thing. I also think when you look at Super, maybe four or five years ago, these lads would have played against a lot of these players already in Super Rugby, where they've not done that at the moment. So the lads that are... Um, fresh into the squad, this will be the first time playing against some of these players. So now they're fully aware of what's expected probably around the collision area when you play a team like South Africa. Um, but as long as we learn, as long as guys like Len, Len's done it for a number of tests now, but other guys fresh in, as long as we learn. Well, look, I can't say any more than that. If we, we don't learn from mistakes, we won't push forward. If we do learn from mistakes, we'll be better for it. As Len, to bring you in, I think you sort of came into Super Rugby as the South Africans were heading over to the URC and European comps. Is there an adjustment period that sort of these Australian sides need? And I guess, is there any super side that's come close to sort of what the physicality that you experience on the weekend sort of can throw up? Yeah, I think um, New Zealand teams are, are quite similar. Uh, they're all big and, and physical there, so um, I, I don't really, for me, I don't see that much of a, of a difference. Um, in terms of rugby style, but they're just big ball carriers who, who love to, get, um, you know, be aggressive and put you under a lot of pressure um, and, and do that for the full 80. Uh, so for us, it's, you know, sticking in there and, and matching that physicality. Last couple on line, please, guys. We'll come back to the room. Jeff is, um, I think last week, Jay said Marika wasn't quite uh, ready. Will he be ready uh, this week if, uh, if uh, called upon? Yeah, mate, look, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We need to review training first. Um, but I'd say all those guys that are, are in will be better for a, a week in camp, a week with us, a week learning our, our play, our structures and what we expect. Any further and just, Yeah, let, let me kind of ask us go around the, um, the midfield and the outside backs. Obviously, you guys didn't get too much ball last week. Is that a, as much a... Okay, tactics thing or is it a communication thing about trying to you know help the inside playmakers because you, you compare the, the spring box they've got the most experience you know, midfield combination i imagine these things you know they're a developing kind of work in progress yeah i think um what we learned was well, we don't want to be waiting for pictures um especially in the a zone there in terms of backs getting getting involved there we want to you know, help help our forwards out there. Um, you know, take the, the tough carries and put them on put them under pressure um, in that way. So, I think 
we just need to step up. Our, our outside backs need to step up and take some of that responsibility, um, especially in the A zone. Thanks, Coach Ben. Not um, just a couple for Jeff. Um, obviously, a lot was made of the fact you guys lost the physicality battle on Saturday, and you know it's one thing. It's easier said than done to say. You know we need to be better in that area against a you know a pretty incredible Springboks pack. So how can you kind of achieve a bit more parity in that area? Yeah, I think um, we lost the accuracy battle, which then fed into their physicality. Um, if you look at they were good at retrieving their contestable kicks, for instance, whereas we weren't. If you look at a few of our first um, set-piece plays, probably didn't go to plan. And all of that little bit of inaccuracy just fed into their their physicality, so the focus is being on more accurate in, in what we do. And I know that might sound boring, but if we're more accurate, then we further up the pitch. If we're more accurate, we put our players, players like Lenny other backs in a better position. So a big focus on just being more accurate in what we do. And uh, Carlos is on, obviously, the Perth boy made his debut against the Springboks. He was kind of thrown in the deep end. Um, but what have you made of his first weeks in camp and his international debut? Yeah, he's good. He's a little fireball, isn't he? Um, gets stuck in. I actually met Carlo when he was 17 and he came across to the Rebels. A long time ago, exactly the same exactly the same kid. So I thought he did some good things. Um, rips in, um, tries as hard as he could do, and he, he was a solid debut for him. And, uh, how important is the start for you, obviously, Perth crowd, especially the big crowd at the Stadium? How important is the start and getting the fans behind you? Yeah, I think the start's important, not just for getting the crowds behind us, but just for us. Um, we saw in that game, we were inaccurate in what we did. The first 10 minutes conceded a number of penalties. Suddenly we're on our line, our 22. So it's always important in every game, mate, but especially when the stakes are higher, when you're playing a better team. Um, really, really important. That doesn't say for start, goes badly, we've got to be good enough to, to find our way into the game, but um, for our lads, yeah, a big, a big focus on that first time.